Is the Lord calling you? What will you answer? Hi, I'm Dr. Laverne Tolbert. Each week, we make Sunday School simple with an easy to understand format. The text for you students of the Word and teaching tips for those of you who teach. Are you ready? Let's pray. Father, we worship you and we say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Thank you, Lord, for being in our lives. Thank you for salvation. And thank you for this lesson today. May we be blessed by it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'd like to give you a personal story about a time that I was in service and we were singing this beautiful worship song to the Lord. And I felt that singing, I just wasn't expressing enough of how I felt. And so I got down on my knees and I started singing and worshiping the Lord. And it's sometimes unusual for us to kneel in service, but we should be able to do that, yes? <laughs> Other people look like, what is she doing? <laughs> but it's okay for us to kneel in service, to stand and raise our hands and worship the Lord because He is holy, holy, holy. And sometimes singing just isn't enough. Our body wants to be involved, which is why I love the African style of worship because they worship with their entire bodies. Well, this is what we're going to study today, worship, as we look into the mirror of God's Word in this new unit one about God's people worshiping. We'll look into the mirror of God's Word by discussing what's important to know cognitive, feel effective, and do psychomotor. Let's begin with our first set of verses from Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 4, New Living Translation. It was in the year King Uzziah died that I saw the Lord. He was sitting on a lofty throne and the train of his robe filled the temple. Attending him were mighty seraphim, each having six wings. With two wings, they covered their faces. With two, they covered their feet. And with two, they flew. They were calling out to each other, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of heaven's armies. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Their voices shook the temple to its foundations, and the entire building was filled with smoke. The key point is, see God's holiness. The northern and southern kingdoms of Israel and Judah experienced great prosperity during the 8th century BC. But God was not pleased with their lifestyles because their leaders had broken the covenant with idol worship, social injustice, and sexual sin. Four major prophets ministered to the southern and northern kingdoms, Amos and Hosea in Israel, and Isaiah and Micah in Judah. Isaiah actually prophesied in both Israel and Judah. He received his call to ministry around 742 BC, which was the year that King Uzziah died. King Uzziah was also known as Azariah, and he began his long reign in 783 BC. In 721 BC, the northern kingdom of Israel fell to the Assyrians, but the southern kingdom of Judah survived for a little while. <laughs> this background and context help us better understand today's lesson so we can apply God's word to our lives. The big picture is this. Isaiah realizes who God is, and he responds to God's call. According to Isaiah, while he was physically inside the temple, his soul was taken up to heaven. There he sees God's holiness. Isaiah sees a magnificent vision of God, the Lord himself, high and lifted up, seated on a throne, which represents God's authority and power. The Lord's majesty is so great that the hem of his robe fills the entire temple. Isaiah also sees the heavenly host, six winged creatures who are seraphs or seraphim, 
which literally means burning ones. With two of their wings, the seraphs cover themselves in reverence to God, and they praise Him continually, saying, Holy, 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 the Lord of hosts. As they cried holy, the doorposts of the temple shake, and the temple is filled with the glory of God. Let's read our next verse, which is Isaiah chapter 6, verse 5. And again, I'm reading in the New Living Translation. Then I said, it's all over. I am doomed, for I am a sinful man. I have filthy lips, and I live among a people with filthy lips. Yet I have seen the King, the Lord of heaven's armies. The key point is, sees his sinfulness. When Isaiah sees a glimpse of God's power and his presence, he sees his sinfulness, which he confesses to God. Isaiah recognizes his unclean lips and heart, and he also recognizes that the people around him have unclean lips and hearts. The symbolic use of the word lips or a mouth in scripture, reveal what is in our hearts. So as Isaiah sees the majesty of God, he sees himself and those around him, and he sees them all in a new light. Isaiah humbles himself in worship, and he confesses his sinfulness before God's holiness. Well, let's read our final set of verses from Isaiah chapter 6, verses 6 through 8, and again, I'm reading in the New Living Translation. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a burning coal he had taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. He touched my lips with it and said, See, this coal has touched your lips. Now your guilt is removed and your sins are forgiven. Then I heard the Lord asking, whom shall I send as a messenger to this people? Who will go for us? I said, here I am, send me. The key point is, here's God's call. Immediately, God responds to Isaiah's confession. He dispatches one of the seraphim to take a burning hot coal from the brazen altar where the sacrifices are offered and touch Isaiah's lips. This is symbolic of God's cleansing and God's forgiveness. And then God asks, who will I send? In other words, who will speak to the people for him? Isaiah hears God's call and responds immediately, here I am, send me. <laughs> what an incredible act of worship and submission to God's will. That's what we should know. How should we feel in response to today's lesson? We should feel in awe of God who is worthy of all praise and worship. Isaiah tells us of his amazing vision of God's majesty, which demonstrates that God has no equal. Mm -mm. He alone is God, the supreme being. And in light of his majesty and splendor, we realize our own helplessness and unworthiness. And we are in awe. We worship and praise the Lord now saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. God alone is worthy to be praised. Well, that's how we should feel. What should we do with what we have just learned? We should commit to answering God's call, and it doesn't get any more simple than that. The Lord sends Isaiah to minister to his people, and Isaiah commits to doing God's will without even knowing what the future holds. He was eventually martyred during the reign of Manasseh, Hezekiah's son. And the phrase in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 37, about those who were sawed in half, it may be a reference to Isaiah's death. Are we willing to go? Are we willing to answer God's call and to do His will without knowing what the future holds? Yes. <laughs> I'll answer for you, yes. <laughs> well, 
That's our scripture made simple. Do you remember our key points? See God's holiness, sees his sinfulness, and hears God's call. In light of God's holiness and majesty, Isaiah sees his own sinfulness and the sinfulness of his people. God needs someone to speak for him, and Isaiah is ready to go wherever the Lord sends him. It's been my honor to share with you today. For additional resources that will help you as you study or teach, I invite you to subscribe to PreceptsDigital.com and you'll find my lesson plan, special teaching tips, the word made simple, and so much more. In addition, you'll connect with a community of believers who are growing as they study God's word together. I look forward to seeing you at PreceptsDigital.com. Let's close the lesson with our keep in mind verse from Isaiah chapter six, verse three. They were calling out to each other, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of heaven's armies. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Isaiah chapter six, verse three, New Living Translation. Child of God, let's recognize God's holiness and respond in our worship saying yes to God's will. Have a great week.